click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about buffer management in and recovery section of the transaction management. We will discuss about the log buffering, the database buffering, what is the role of an operating system in terms of this recovery technique as buffering, and finally what is fuzzy checkpointing. <music> Buffer provides an important role in the transaction management that we can have as in recovery of the transactions on this part of this operating system. Now the buffering can be done in many stages like for this transactions can be also happen in many stages on the database management system. Now the first stage is in log buffering. What is a log? We know that log is required to maintain all the values for a data item that a transaction is operating. Now, if the transaction is performing on some data item and the data item is not consistent on the completion of the transaction, then we can say that the data item is an inconsistent state. Now, if we maintain a log of that particular data item, so now we can know that what value were the old values that were being written by the data item by the transaction. Now that we can provide this log as a part of this transaction management system, now if it is in failure on the transaction, then we can recover it from the transaction very smoothly with the help of this logs. Now what is mainly log buffering that there is a buffer area or this buffer space where we can store the data for the log while all the logs are being performed for a transactions. Now if there are more updates then we are storing all the logs first in this buffer area and then finally we will store this buffer to the output disk as a result of that final log. Now what is this important of this log buffering? Because the log are itself very expensive because it is storing all the versions of the data item that the transaction is performing. Now when the transaction is performing such data, then we can see that all the logs are very expensive because they contain the detail. And now if in free time we want to update our database with this log of information, then it will be an expensive and also an tedious task for the database designer. Now what we do instead, we provide a buffer that stores all the logs for a particular transaction. Now after the transaction commits, then we can have that log be stored again back to the database as a part of this buffering transfer. Now as a result of this log buffering, log may remain in the main memory for a considerable period of time like in this volatile storage and after that when the log will be updated with each of this rule that we will describe now we can just put the log buffer updated to the disk block now what is in right ahead logging or val rule so there are three rules that is associated with val the first one is before there the transaction commits we must make this transaction commit that is ti comment comment with this log that means we must use the log to maintain the ti commit record the next is when the ti commit is being put to this log before any commit that has been made to this database so now we must need to perform the log entrance of this ti commit command and then before the commit is actually taken place we must replace it in the log and the third one is that for the database that the log we are maintaining, we need to put the database log updation into the log first, and then we need to update the database according to the log. That means we are writing ahead logging. That means the writing on that particular data item or the log is performing first before that logging is done or the log actually stored to the database. Now this rule that is well which we are following stands for that we are actually having a consistent data with the concurrent execution of the transactions.
Now it permits for the redo information that we are having on the transaction. That means writing the data again and again in the log, but not the undo operation, which is performing once only when the log is being transferred to the database. Now this log-based buffering becomes extremely useful when we are having a database that is containing a large number of updates. Because when there are updates that is more, we can contain the updates in the log and the log buffer can be restored into the database at a later time. So now it will also not only take the consumption of memory that is very much lesser than the original log-based recovery, but this log buffering also supports for that a particular update which is not being made the particular dirty update or dirty write then we can store it into back the memory now what is a dirty write say for an instance that the transaction is writing or modifying a data item and without being read that data item the transaction is written again that data item to modify it so we consider the first write as a dirty write and the update as a dirty update. So if log buffering is used, then we can get rid of this dirty update as because we can just not store the log of the dirty update into the log record on the database. So now we can avoid not only this result that will be a lesser one because we can just have the specified result to store into the disk, not all the result that we can have in this log. Now this three rule enforces that whenever we are performing a log, that is we are outputting to the disk, we are outputting as a whole. That means the whole data block that is being used for that log will be output at this time now to this disk block, not as a part of this data blocks. So it is also known as a log force that we are forcing a particular data block to be updated to the disk at the same time with all portions of the data block. The next technology that we will using for the buffer management is the database buffering. Now the database buffering goes for that when we are updating a data block, not a log, that we are considered the log enough that we are containing all the updates, all the writes, commit, abort, read operations into this log. Now the data that we are actually updating will it be transferred to the data block immediately no the data block will not immediately be transferred to the disk that they are updated we will wait and partition this data block when the log is forced to have the whole data block to be transferred to the disk block but while the database buffering we are allowing to get a partition on the database so that we can have a particular portion on the database to get updated and written back to the disk while the other portions which is still active in this memory will not be stored in the particular one. Now there are two policies that we can apply. The first one is in force policy that we will force every database to reside into only the main memory not supported back into this disk block or the secondary memory until and unless all portions of the data block has been modified and updated by the transaction. Now within the no force policy, we are not restricting the database to follow such condition. The database in any time at any part of this block can be transferred to the disk by the transaction. Now the no force policy can be successful with this write ahead logging rule that we have described because if we follow that logging rule then whether a data block has been transferred to the disk block or not it doesn't affect the logs because the logs are having the data with the old value and the new values so we can have original value if it results in an inconsistent state after transferring some portions of the data blocks to the main memory now the no force policy as force also the commit transaction and there we can reach within commit policy. Now there is a policy that is known as a commit policy where we are committing the transaction in such a way that the data block which the transaction is committing a partial, then it will be stored back into the disk. 
Now what happens, there is another policy that is related to this one, which is known as a steal policy. So if some data blocks which is being modified and then written back to the disk as a part of this no force policy, but still it is active on memory. So by the still policy, we allow that no portions in the database that are modified and stored into this disk block can be active into the memory. Now in contrast, there is one more policy that is known as a no still policy, which will not allow any database portion to be remodified and written back to the disk lock, whether it is active in the memory, that means at a later time, we can update the memory or we can have the modification on that part of this data block. Now the no steal policy still works with the transactions as far we have this well rule because also now the log will maintain any data that it is performing and the transaction can be performed with the no steal policy. However, this no steal policy doesn't work with the transaction that has a larger number of updates because now the database buffer can be filled with the updates already the transaction is performing and the new updates that is being performed later on that part of the data block may not be stored into the buffer if it is not cleared back to the disk memory. So the no still policy is not for the larger number of updates, it is only considered for a smaller number of updates where we can put this update back to this disk block. Now let us consider for an example to exemplify our still and no still policy. See suppose a transaction T0, we are starting the transaction by T0 start writing it into the log. Now after that we are writing T0 A 1950. That means the transaction T0 is accessing the value of data item A with the old value of 1000 and the new value of 950. Now suppose the T0 is having also the updation of B and C in such a way that the B will be given back the plus 50 to it and the C will be have the result of having this A plus B. Now what happens if the transaction in the middle of this updation that it has performed the T0 start T0 A 1950 as a log on this database buffer and after that the transaction fails to complete its transaction. So now the resultant of A, B, C will result in an inconsistent data with 950, 2000 and 2950 which is, is not desirable. But as we have maintained a write ahead logging rule by what we can know that the previous value of A was 1000 and then we can check the value with the previous log record and the new log record. If these two lag record matches with each other, then we can say that we have performed it right, otherwise we will abort the transaction and re-execute it again. Now to perform this type of steal policy that the A portion was being affected, updated only, but now it is also active in part of B and C, that the amount that is deducted from A will be now given to this account B. So now A is still active logically in this memory. So we can provide this type of problem, a solution to by providing a lock. See when we are providing a lock buffer, that means a locking on a buffer that is extremely different from the locking on a particular transaction. Now here we cannot say that we are providing a two phase locking for a lock buffer because if we are saying that we are locking on a particular buffer, so it doesn't mean that the buffer will be acquired all locks in a phase and then will be released. So now we can have also a problem if we provide in a two-phase locking protocol. So the buffer is locked for a particular predicate, say for the salary is greater than 90,000. Now we can store the shorter result and have many of this updation on this buffer. Now the buffer will be filled out and if we are locking on a particular buffer, not releasing the buffer by releasing the lock, then we will have a shortage of this buffer. Now the locks on this buffer and the locks on the short part of this transaction are also known as latches. 
Now, how the latches can be performed? Before any write or the disk modification on a particular data item, we must exclusive lock acquire on that particular data item by the lock or the buffer. Now that how action will be taken? First, the exclusive lock will be acquired by the particular buffer on that data item. Next, the data item will be performed the lock addition. Third, the data item will be written back to the disk. And fourth, the data item will be released from that buffer on that exclusive lock. So now we can see that buffers are being locked and released after that buffer has been written to that particular data item to the disk block. So now it also supports that not only the buffer is having no steal, but also it is ensuring no force policy. But this policy has a serious disadvantage that is known as a dirty block. So what is in dirty block? The data block that has been modified by the buffer, but the buffer is not substantially output to the disk block. And now the buffer is holding a value that is never used by that particular data. So like this dirty rate, dirty blocks are minimized when we increase the number of buffers in the memory area. So in this way, the database buffer and the log buffer can be used in the buffer management to provide a recovery technique from a transaction failure. Now, what is the operating system's role for providing such buffering? There are two roles that is associated with it. The first one is when the buffer area that it is maintaining, the operating system, rather than using the database, it manages the area on that buffer. That means now the database manager itself can provide the buffer area to hold on to the database rather than the operating system is intervening to it. So it is just free from the kernel just as a user application's performance or the task to have that build on that buffer and to store the log on the buffer to back it into the disk block. So the operating system has a list involvement in this case. But in the second way, while we are having this database buffer, that means the data blocks are now stored in the buffer, not in the disk space. Now there are some pages which requires the data blocks to be stored in or is an active in the main memory. And the main memory is containing the buffer to reside in this non-volatile storage for a longer time. Now, when it gets back into the volatile storage or in the primary memory, then we are saying that there is a swap space that is managed by this operating system. Now, what is this operating system swap space? That is first all the pages that are not brought into the main memory, only a predefined section on the main memory that is brought from the disk memory. Now that we are storing the memory that is not in the disk memory, but in the main memory, only a copy or portion. Now the swap space is a space that is used by the operating system as a buffer or a database buffer to the transaction. Now, whenever the transaction is requiring another page that belongs to the disk memory, now it can fetch that memory into the main memory by swapping some of the pages that is not currently used by the transaction or the data blocks that is not used by the transaction at that moment of time. So this swap space is extremely useful because it is considered to be taken a lesser amount of memory. It is managed by the operating system, not the database management system. So now the operating system can take care of it, writing the logs, writing the database buffers, while having the updates on the database buffers, write it back to the disk system, and then get back the result into the main memory. So that is the role of an operating system while having this buffer management active in it. The next section that we will discuss is in fuzzy checkpointing. Before going to fuzzy checkpointing, we must know that what is in checkpointing. Now the checkpoint is a point till when we consider that the transaction is being partially committed or the checkpoint till if we roll back a transaction, then before the checkpoint, all the transaction will not be redo. 
So checkpoint is some way the supportance of this undoing performance. So when we are undoing something, that means we will undo it till the last checkpoint. Now the normal checkpoint, we are not allowing any database buffer to write back on this updates on that buffer to the disk memory while we are checkpointing the data. That means since the output pages are not output to the disk rather than by checkpointing it, so even if there are many updates that is associated with many pages, see for the log records or the database buffer that are holding that pages that is being modified. Now, if there are larger number of updates as we have specifically mentioned in the previous one, like in this database buffering, so now the log will be filled up and the buffer will be overflowed. So what will happen, maybe we will result in an inconsistent data while losing some of its contents because of the checkpoints. Now, if there are many checkpoints and the buffer is being overflowed, then we may result that some checkpoints or data are lost. So what we can do, we can use a fuzzy checkpointing rather than use a normal checkpoint. So what is the concept of fuzzy checkpointing? That means we are having a checkpoint until and unless a simple log is being performed and updated. Now while the log is being updated, we are writing the data back to a temporary memory that will be stored as a sole time into this output as a disk memory. Now the disk memory is having the output as a whole of this temporary data or the result of the fuzzy checkpointing while the temporary area is maintaining all the checkpoints for each symbol records on the log that it uses as a database buffer. Now the database buffer are storing the log records. The log records are maintaining the checkpoints for each of this database buffer as a fuzzy checkpointing but the checkpoints are not actually stored back into the disk memory. We can store the disk memory as its whole because it will require a lesser number of blocks to transfer. Because if we are using this fuzzy checkpointing, see for the data item B, there is a BX memory which is used for the fuzzy checkpointing. So this is an extra overhead that we need to maintain for a particular data item B. So in this way, fuzzy checkpointing can provide us to help with deal the checkpoints that the checkpoints will be stored and not lost in any of this case of the system crash, the logical error, or any disk failure. But it is also incurring an extra overhead of keeping an extra block of data to store this fuzzy checkpointing. So that is all for buffering like this database, the log buffering, the operating system's role and finally fuzzy checkpointing. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.